Welcome to lecture 5 on our YouTube course on design of steel structure based on Indian code. In today's lecture, we will look at some important topics. First, we will look at assigning diaphragms to our structure. Then, we will look at application of load on frame and cell elements. And finally, before ending today's lecture, we will apply some loads onto our steel truss roof. And then, in our next lecture, we will continue with the application of load part where we will look at the application of wind load onto our structure. So first, let's start with assigning diaphragms. So which diaphragm should be assigned to our floor levels for this steel structure? Our floor is a composite floor deck. That means we have a metal profile seating on which Concreting is performed to build our floor system. So what type of diaphragm should we assign? For that, we will take the reference of ASC 710 code. This ASC 710 code, which is the code for minimum design loads for buildings and other structures. In this code, in clause number 13, 12.3.1.2 what it says is that diaphragms of concrete slabs or concrete filled metal deck ours is a concrete filled metal deck in this steel structure so diaphragms of concrete slabs or concrete filled metal deck with span to depth ratios of 3 or less in structures that have no horizontal irregularities are permitted to be idealized as rigid so there are two conditions here first the span to depth ratio should be equal to or less than 3 and then we should have no horizontal irregularities. For now, we do not have any irregularities in our building. So this condition is fulfilled. And to find the span to depth ratio, how do we find the span to depth ratio? Remember this span to depth ratio is not the ratio of the slab itself. See here, the span to depth ratio does not refer to that of the slab itself. But rather the ratio of the distance between frames that means span means the distance between the frames and depth means the width of the diaphragm so if the diaphragm is long and narrow it can be considered as a rigid diaphragm long and narrow diaphragm means the span is very much greater as compared to the depth so to calculate the span to depth ratio we have to first find the span and the depth separately. Let's go to our model here. And let's see that, for example, what does the span means? Span means the distance between the frames. So the distance between the frames is different here. For example, between grids A and B, we have 3.325, 2.35, 3.375, again 3.375 and 3.26. And then depth means, let's see here, depth means the width of the diaphragm. So the width of our diaphragm is 5.27 meter. So if we divide this 3.325 divided by 5.27, obviously the span to depth ratio comes to be less than 3. Even if we take any other span here, for example, 3.375 or 3.26 and divide it by the depth of our diaphragm, that is 5.27 meter, the ratio comes out to be less than 3. So in this case, since there are no horizontal irregularities and also the span to depth ratios is less than 3, we can suppose that our diaphragm is a rigid diaphragm in this case of metal deck. So to assign rigid diaphragm, what I will do is Let's first define a rigid diaphragm. For that, go to define diaphragms. We already have diaphragm D1 defined here. If you select this D1 and then left click on modify so diaphragm, it is rigid. I will add a new diaphragm named D2, which is also rigid here. So, OK and OK. Now let's apply the diaphragm. To apply the diaphragm, first we are at story 1 here at 3.2 meter. Let me select all the joints of this story. For that, what I will do is go to select, select, 
coordinate specification and select the option click joint in xy plane so in this xy plane here if you click on any joint now all the joints of this plane will be selected for example if i click here in the middle now all the joints of this z is equal to 3.2 meter has been selected then go to assign joint diaphragms and then d1 okay similarly go to your second story at z equals to 6.4 meter again go to select select coordinate specification and click joint in xy plane select any joint here for example this joint here and then go to assign joint diaphragms and then select d2 and then click on ok so now we have assigned our diaphragms here save the model now after assigning diaphragm let's start with application of load So before going to the model and applying the loads, let's see here what will be the magnitude of our loads. First, we are supposing that the walls of our building are not constructed of masonry wall here. Although we have named and defined our load pattern at masonry wall, our wall, you can just rename that load case or leave that name as it is also. But we will suppose here that our walls are composed of this autoclaved reinforced cellular concrete wall slabs you can select any other type of walling and then also look at the unit weight of that walling system in IS875 part 1 code this IS875 part 1 code is the code of practice for design loads and in part 1 we will only deal with dead loads that is the unit weight of building materials and stored materials in this part 1 code if you go to table 2 and go to this number 9 you will find the unit weight of this reinforced cellular concrete wall slabs so the unit weight is different based on the different classes of this wall slab for now let us suppose that ours is a class e walling material and for class e walls the unit weight varies from 4.4 to 5.4 this is kilonewton per meter square so this the mean value of this 4.4 and 5.4 will be 5 kilonewton so we will suppose that the unit weight of our wall system is 5 kilonewton per meter similarly this is for masonry load now for live load of the same code IS875 but now for part 2 that is for imposed loads go to table 1 and table 1 presents the imposed floor load for different occupancies and also for various types of roof so since this is our office building we can see that in table 1 the office building has these different values of imposed load or live load for room with general use with separate storage 2.5 for rooms without separate storage 4 for cafeterias and dining rooms 3 kN for kitchens 3 kN per meter square and for corridor passages lobbies and staircase 4 kN per meter square and for bathroom and toilets 2 kN per meter square similarly for balconies same as rooms to which they give access to but with a minimum of four so this table gives us the values of different imposed floor loads for different occupancies similarly if you see for roof you will see that if the access is not provided to the roof you will use 1.5 kilonewton per meter square and if access is not provided except for maintenance then 0.75 kilonewton per meter square but this is only for roof with sloping degrees up to 10 that means for slope up to 10 degrees if the slope is greater than 10 degrees then for every unit increase of slope you will decrease this imposed load by 0.02 kN per meter square so as the slope of the roof increases to a value greater than 10 degrees then the magnitude of the roof live load also decreases along with the increase in the slope so this is about the imposed load on various types of roof and for calculating 
the load on our structure due to floor finish here i have calculated some dead load due to the floor finish for example first year i have taken unit weight of cement plaster here from table one of is 875 part one dead load from 12.5 mm thick cement plaster will be this unit weight into this thickness in meter which is 0 0.0125 so 0 0.255 kilo newton per meter square dead load from motor is creating let us suppose 0 0.21 kilo newton per meter square unit weight of marble finishing 26.7 kilo newton per meter cube so if we have used a one inch thick marble that means 25.4 mm then the dead load from that one inch thick marble will be 26.7 into 0 0.0254 which is 0 0.678 kilo newton per meter square and dead load from parquet flooring 0 0.10 kilo newton per meter square so if we have used marble for example on our staircase then our total floor finish load will be due to this cement plaster 0 0.255 and then motor is screed 0 0.21 and then finally due to marble which is 0 0.678 so you get 1.143 but if you have not used any marble then just no need to add this 0 0.678 just add these two values and you get 0 0.465 and if you have used parquet flooring that is in different rooms then 0 0.255 plus 0 0.21 plus 0 0.10 you get the dead load from floor finish is 0 0.565 kilonewton per meter square so this is how we calculated the value of imposed load due to floor finish and we will apply this same floor finish load in our structure also so after looking at this calculation let me just discard this and go to our model first let us apply the wall loads and the magnitude of our wall load will be 5 kilonewton per meter square so select all the beams on which this wall load is to be applied for example you have to select okay what i will do is i will select the option here all stories okay let's not do all story let's go to similar story since these two floors are the same we have one room here between grids d and f and then one room between c and d and then another room between a and b and the plan is the same for both floors let us use this similar storage option so now we start selecting beams you can see on your 3d view on the right hand side that if you select the beam on any one floor then the beams and all these similar floors are being selected okay your these beams are being selected at the roof level also so let's just do one story select all the exterior beams here in this way then you have wall load here here in this frame and you won't have wall load here because this is a single room similarly now go to your upper floor select all these exterior beams that is beams on your outer grids and then beams on your inner grids so you want a wall load here now go to assign and then frame loads and distributed this will be our with our wall load that is okay we have written it as wall not masonry it's okay and the uniform load will be 5 kN per meter and then click on OK. So this is our wall load. Now after applying wall load, let us apply live load onto our floors. So select all your floors here. Except that of these staircase slabs because the magnitude of live load will be different. Similarly go to your bottom story and select these floors. So go to assign cell loads and uniform our live load will be 3 kN per meter square in the direction of gravity apply okay let us apply floor finish also on these same floors on we have on which we have just applied this 3 kN per meter square live load to select the same floors again go to select and 
click on get previous selection again these slabs are selected since all of these are rooms we have supposed that we have used parquet flooring on these rooms and for parquet flooring let's see here the value of our floor finish load comes out to be 0 0.565 so now after selecting these floors select the load pattern is floor finish and then apply 0 0.565 apply okay now we will apply load on our staircase slabs this both inclined slab and then this horizontal slab also so for that what i will do is go to select select properties and then slab section select this non option and then close since these slabs were defined with no non properties that means not any specific property we have selected all these slabs and also select these two slabs that are remaining that act as landing slab okay so this is our whole slab system for our staircases. Now go to assign cell load uniform. First we will apply live load with a value of 4 kN per meter square. Apply. Then go to select and then get previous selection. Now apply floor finish load with marble that is 1.143. Select the load pattern name is floor finish and 1.143 apply. Okay, we let's see here we have defined a different load pattern name for our live load on our staircase, but we applied the live load on this live load pattern name. So what I will do is I will select this previous get previous selection and then select this live option and then set the value to zero now you can see if you right click here you can see that the live load has not been applied here now again select get previous selection select the load pattern name is steer live and then give the value of uniform load is 4 kN per meter square and then apply so on this staircase slab so we have applied our live load and then floor finish load now we have to apply load for our staircase steps to do that what we will do here is we will suppose that if this is our staircase step one single step we will suppose that this has a width of 200 and 50 mm 250 mm this has a length of check this length from the width of your staircase 1.1 meter that is 1100 mm and we will suppose that this is a metal sheet of thickness 5 mm so let's go open our calculator app and calculate the unit weight of this single step so first 1100 mm means 1.1 meter length into 250 mm width means 0 0.25 meter width into thickness is 5 mm so 0 0.005 so this is the volume of one step now multiply it with the unit weight of steel section that is 7850 so this 10.79 is the unit weight of in kg this is the unit weight of one step so to convert this into newton just multiply by 9.81 so this is 105 newton and to convert it into kilonewton just divide by thousand so this is the value of the weight of one single step 0 0.10588 kilonewton so since we have nine steps on a single flight multiply it with nine now you get this to be 0 0.95298 kilonewton now to convert it into area load divide it by the area of our inclined slab so if you go to our etaps model close this 
and just right click on this inclined slab and go to this geometry you will see that our area of this slab is 3.04 meter square just click ok go to your calculator and divide this by 3.04 so it nearly comes out to be 0.313 kilonewton per meter square for the load of our staircase steps. So let's suppose this to be 0.32. Go to select, get previous selection. Okay, you, we do not need to do this get previous selection. Now we only have to select the inclined slabs because only on those inclined slabs will we have staircase steps. So for that, just select these slabs from your model itself one two three and four so after selecting this go to assign cell load uniform select the load pattern name as stair did and apply 0.32 kilonewton per meter square and then left click and ok so save the model before proceeding now let's go to our load pattern name and see what load patterns we have defined so we have applied live load we have applied floor finish load wall load also truss load let's leave this for now steer dead load steer live load we have applied okay roof live and cgi load we will look today for this remaining part and then in our next lecture we will deal with this wind load so before applying the CGI load and wind load let me create some groups here so that it becomes easy for me to select this truss element for now I would like to create a group for all of our problems you can see here by right clicking that we have used ISNB 40M section property for our problems okay, let's verify this it's ISNB 50M I think there is a mistake we have to use ISNB 50M here so what I will do is let's leave that for now let's create a group first so for that go to define and then go to this option here group definitions and left click on add option and this rename this group 1 to Perlins Perlins and then left click on OK now I will assign these purlin elements in our modal layer to that purlin group. For that I will have to select all of our purlin elements first. So let's select all of our purlin elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 